it, it's ironic that uh, the the U.S. policy has now been more based on fear, whereas as the uh, the Chinese policy has been based on hope. China has been growing so rapidly, and these other countries have really been in the doldrums, not alone because of COVID, but because economic policy has, from 2008 until now, has not really gotten the rest of the world out of the financial uh, dilemma that they found themselves in, and so that they contrast where they're going with where China's going, and they get upset about this, so they take measures where they think that they will you know, be able to uh, uh, to uh, operate better without being dependent upon China. I don't think it's anything to be overly worried about because I don't even think the United States is going to take this too far because changing your supply chains and, and re, uh, revamping your entire economic apparatus is very, very expensive. And the U.S. is in a problem. They have to get out of COVID. They have to try and revive the economy here. And you can't have these additional expenses at the same time, uh, it'll, or you'll go broke. So I think a lot of it is talk at this point, but there will be measures taken because you know every country has to secure you know some domestic supplies, and for a variety of reasons, it can be for security, uh, for medical reasons. But nevertheless, the advantage that countries have had is that there has been a general uh, expansion of trade continually over the last 50 years or so. And that has been benefit beneficial for most of the countries involved, in fact, for all of the countries, even though it has been an uneven development. Um, <clears throat> in developing countries, they've, they've benefited from it, but they've also gotten the, the raw deal on that. So it, it hasn't been a an equal and, and glorious thing for everybody, but generally it has pushed uh, countries forward. So trying to go backwards and becoming <clears throat> kind of what they call autarkic or self-dependent uh, is, is not going to lead to economic growth. So I think there are certain limits to that happening. My, my advice to the Chinese would be <clears throat> be patient, move in the direction you're doing, talk to everybody about it. Everybody's not going to jump on board in the same way on this idea of uh, creating new supply chains. And over time, I think there will be a realization that the attempt to try and shut China out in any area, even in the area of high technology, is, is really a losing game. And I, I think they will give it up and try and find, find ways of cooperation rather than, than of conflict. Having, joining the RCEP was, I think, a great victory uh, for China because if you recall the, the TPP, was uh, clearly designed to keep China out, you know, and everybody else in. It was a part of this so-called Indo-Pacific strategy nonsense. Uh, so that by joining the RCEP, China is very definitely in, and the other countries want China to be in because of the importance of the Chinese economy. <clears throat> On the new agreement, the CPTTP, um, I think that would also be beneficial uh, you'd have to look at the, you know, on all these agreements, you have to look at the, the small print to see exactly what it means, how it's going to affect your economy, and maybe there have to be negotiations on, on certain things. But I, I think generally it would also be a, a good thing, and hopefully <clears throat> it would be something now with the new Biden administration that both China and the United States could be a part of. That would not be a bad thing. That would be a form of uh, kind of coming together in a multilateral context, which I think would help in terms of creating more trust uh, on the bilateral level. But, you know, you, you'd have to look at the details on that. I think generally being a part of these, uh, the Asia, especially the Asian uh, market uh, multilateral agreements is extremely important for China, is extremely important 